What's up, everyone? Before we get to the video's topic today, why don't you go ahead and follow me on Twitter slash X for world-shattering information on when I have a Chinese food craving or if you want to experience any of my other brain farts. It's Key's castle music because Key's to the castle music was too long and my threats to Elon didn't work. All right, so Billboard magazine came out with their list of the top 50 greatest rock lead singers of all time. And of course, I have a problem with some of it. I know this stuff is subjective, so I'm not really blowing a gasket, but I do have some disagreements. I also have an issue with the way they label things. Much like Rolling Stone magazine, Billboard seems to kowtow to the new idea of inclusion for the sake of inclusion, or mistaken the notion of iconic for best or greatest. The title isn't the 50 most iconic or the 50 best performers or the 50 best front persons to jive more with modern times. It's the 50 greatest rock lead singers of all time. Some parts of this list would make much more sense if the title was either of the former because there would be more objectivity and the subjectivity of choosing iconic and best performers, if that makes sense. The way they put their lists together is like they'll say here are the 50 best looking singers of all time and then give you criteria that has nothing to do with looks and they stick Mick Jagger in at number three. Um, excuse me? Just look at the title and then the subtitle of the headline. The 50 greatest rock lead singers of all time. From rock's early years up until today, the most legendary band leaders to ever grab the microphone. So which is it? Is it a list of the 50 greatest rock lead singers of all time or a list of the 50 most legendary band leaders of all time that just so happen to sing? They make it so much so like a Jackson Pollock painting that it takes the heat off of the people choosing who should be on the list and why they're on the list but I'm here to smack them in the face with the frying pan. And of course, these are just my opinions, and I'm sure other music lovers or even prominent people in the industry are going to disagree with me, and that's fine, but you're wrong. First, let's go through some of the description of why Billboard chose these singers. Here at Billboard, we're taking a moment to honor those front-of-stage greats, the rock and roll singers who elevated their bands to stratospheric heights and inspired entire generations of vocalists to follow in the paths they blazed. These are the most legendary avatars from rock's seven-decade history, the folks who, with their singing, with their songwriting, with their ineffable live charisma, and particularly with their undefinable, all-encompassing presence, have done the greatest job of spreading the music's gospel to all corners of the world, serving as mouthpieces for their bands and spokespeople for the genre. So right there, it's not consistent with the title. Am I being Captain Literal Man here? Yes, I am. You can't claim to make a list comprised of the greatest rock lead singers of all time and then include a hodgepodge of reasons other than vocal ability, like songwriting, charisma, a singer who sort of kind of might be a rock singer, or fashion sense. I mean, I know they have to try and spice it up a little bit, but vocals should be first and foremost. Ineffable live charisma and undefinable all-encompassing presence. Charles Manson and Ted Bundy had ineffable life charisma and undefinable all-encompassing presence too. It doesn't mean they would be the greatest rock lead singers of all time. I know they are also judging them based on their vocal ability, but with their explanation of their criteria, you don't know just how much they're judging them based on their vocal ability. Now this is apparent with a few of their picks, most notably with their number 49 and number 8 picks. It continues. In assembling our list, we allowed that some bands could have multiple front people considered lead singers, but we only ended up including one per group. But we were picky about the band part. Groups had to be mostly consistent from one album to the next and play the majority of their own instruments, as well as the rock part. While many of the groups here span and or defy genres, we had to be comfortable considering them largely a rock band for them to count here. Okay, but I love this next part. And most challengingly, we opted to disqualify lead singers whose most famous bands are named after them. Bruce Springsteen, Prince, Joan Jett, because it made the lines between solo artist and band too blurry, and because we'd prefer to use this list to focus on the bands that were more democratically assembled, but whose front people still led the way in singular fashion. What? You didn't want to include some of the biggest names in rock music that would lead singers in rock bands because it blurred the lines between solo artist and band with the front person and their band and democratically assembled, but whose front people still led the way in singular fashion? What the hell does that even mean? I read that last line like 10 times and I still haven't figured out what they mean and I'm like kind of smarter than a chimpanzee. 
I'm beginning to think that these music magazines are outsourcing their writing to political speech writers. Did Bruce Springsteen hold a gun to Steven Van Zandt's head and tell him that either he joins the band or else he's going to sleep with the fishes? And imagine telling one of the most influential women in rock music, Joan Jett, she doesn't qualify for this list when she literally founded the Blackhearts and was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2015. Joan Jett has released or been a part of 18 studio albums. 12 of them are with the Blackhearts and four more are with another iconic rock band she founded in the Runaways like three years before the Blackhearts. Here's Joan Jett's Wikipedia entry and I know Wikipedia isn't the end all be all of information but it's not like we're looking up state secrets here or trying to find out if mermaids exist. Joan Jett is an American rock singer, guitarist, songwriter, record producer and actress. She is best known for her work as the front woman of her band, Joan Jett and the Blackhawks, and for earlier founding and performing with the Runaways, which recorded and released the hit song Cherry Bomb. With the Blackhearts, Jett is known for her rendition of the song I Love Rock and Roll, which was number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for seven weeks in 1982. Jett's other notable songs include Bad Reputation, Light of Day, I Hate Myself for Loving You, and her covers of Crimson and Clover, Do You Want to Touch Me, Oh Yeah, and Dirty Deeds. I mean, how can you just erase their work with their band just because they also had solo careers at some point, no matter how big or small? What the hell do you mean it blurs the line? All right, so let's start with me mentioning some of the people that I've never heard of on this list. Now, my taste in music spans a very diverse range, and I'm very inquisitive when it comes to finding the new music I've never heard before. I say it all the time, but I have a lot of music stuff floating around in this size 8 head of mine. But I've never heard these artists until now, which leads me to criticize Billboard's criteria again. If they chose artists that have done the greatest job of spreading the music's gospel to all corners of the world, serving as mouthpieces for their bands and spokespeople for the genre, then how come I've never heard of them or their work? So, I checked out their music. It would make sense if I'm going to cover this topic, right? I'll start off with number 49, Ruben Albaran from Cafe Tacuba. Billboard talks about a stage presence, exciting unpredictability, raw vulnerability with boundless passion, and his sardonic humor, silly dance moves, native pride, and Latin rock mystique. Frankly, I don't care. And I'm not saying this to insult Albaran. This is a criticism of Billboard. They say a whole lot without saying anything at all. Go listen to Cafe Tacuba's songs. I did. They don't exactly scream rock to me. I didn't hear anything special that you would think you'd hear when discussing a best of anything list. These guys are a niche band for a Latin American audience. You could walk down the street in front of a bodega in New York, throw a rock, and hit someone who can do the same thing. That might sound harsh, and I really do hate judging singers, but it's just my opinion, and that's the objective of talking about these lists. I'm sure someone out there will disagree with me. The writer does. On to number 33, Gustavo Cerati from Soda Stereo. Another colorful description with his stage presence was a symphony of mystical allure. So was the wall when I'm drunk or high. Now, Cerati has more gravitas to his voice and music in the genre of rock that Al Baron had, and I think he's a more realistic entry to this list, but going by Billboard's criteria here of spreading the music's gospel to all corners of the world, is he really qualified to be on this list? Obviously, every living soul doesn't need to know who they are, but I bet if you walk down most streets around the world, they have no idea who this guy or his band is. Maybe it's me. Maybe I'm just too sheltered when it comes to listening to international artists. I want to point out that the same writer wrote both segments for the last two Latin artists. So Billboard probably asked the Latin writer to choose a couple of Latin artists for the sake of diversity. There's nothing wrong with that if it's warranted. The third and final artist that I've never heard of on this list is number 31, Laura Jane Grace from the band Against Me. I kind of feel like I should know who this is because she's American, but I don't and I never heard their music before now. Laura Jane Grace, formerly known as Thomas Jane Gable, is transgender, and I can't help but think it's another inclusionary entry to the list. That's not to say that transgender people can't be great singers, but I've just never heard of them. I think Anoni is a great singer and they're transgender. Even if they were just talking about other great iconic rock singers, they could have included artists like Ronnie James Dio or Rod Stewart or Tom Petty or Greg Allman or Bruce Dickinson. All left off the list and there are probably more that were left off the list that were more qualified to take this spot or that made more sense to take this spot even by Billboard's own criteria. So that's only three artists on the list that I had no idea about. All right, so now we get to what might be my only two other issues with inclusion on this list before we get to the top 10. Most of my issues with the rest of this list have to do with placement for the most part. At number 37, it's Gwen Stefani from No Doubt. 
I mean, I never really liked her voice. I thought she had a great voice. She has a unique voice, but I wouldn't have had her on this list. She was in an influential ska rock band, but I think there are more people deserving to be on the list. At number 13 is Haley Williams from Paramore. I love some of their songs, but number 13? I don't think she should be on the list at all, considering the people that they left off the list, but even if she does deserve to be on the list, why does she deserve to be number 13? She's ahead of Dave Grohl at number 48, Grace Slick at number 35, Steve Perry at number 30, Ann Wilson at number 29, Janis Joplin at number 25, Eddie Vedder at number 22, Chris Cornell at number 17, and Steven Tyler at number 14, just to name a few. Really? All right, so let's get to the top 10. So you have Axl Rose at number 10, Bono at number 9, and George Clinton at number 8. George Clinton of Parliament Funkadelic. Great band, great innovation, great music, great production, but not even close to a great singer. Billboard even acknowledges as much. So I guess I just have different criteria for rock lead singers. The very next entry at number seven is Debbie Harry from Blondie. At first I was thinking she shouldn't be on the list because they're more kind of like a pop band, but realistically they're more new wave. Whether she should be number seven is highly debatable. They do have some iconic rock hits with songs like One Way or Another and Call Me, and she does have a really good voice. I'm just not so sure she should be so high up. At number six is David Byrne from Talking Heads, and they're in the same boat as Blondie in my opinion. They're more pop or new wave, and he doesn't have a great rock voice in my opinion either. So once again, way too high on the list if he should be on the list at all. At number five is Kurt Cobain from Nirvana, and this might be an unpopular opinion but I don't think he should be this high at all. Is he iconic after a short amount of time with Nirvana and after his death? Yeah, but does he deserve to be so high on the list? I'm not so sure. Number four is Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin, and number three is Freddie Mercury from Queen. No problem with either one of them. Number two is Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac. I love Stevie Nicks. I love her voice, but I feel she should not be number two on this list. There are more rock lead singers that are better choices to be this high. I actually think that Ann Wilson should be much higher. She has a magnificent, powerful voice. All the singers I mentioned before when talking about Haley Williams should probably be higher than Stevie Nicks in my opinion. Not to disparage Stevie Nicks because I do love her and Fleetwood Mac. Number one on the list of the 50 greatest rock lead singers is Mick Jagger from the Rolling Stones. I like their songs but I've never been a huge Stones fan and I'm kind of on the fence with Mick Jagger. Should he be number one? There's definitely an argument to be made, but I'm not mad. So am I nitpicking with some of these? Probably. Am I being literal with greatest singer? Probably. I guess I just have a different standard for what should be considered when wording titles of articles or lists or the criteria for which to choose who you pick for those lists. All right, so let me know what you think about Billboard's list of the 50 greatest rock lead singers of all time. Also, let me know what you think about my criticisms and tell me about what lists you would make for the top 10 or so. And I'll see you later.